currently working on my uh, Pandem FC3S RX7 body, and I am doing the score and snap right now. I've got the uh, bumpers and lights and um, all that stuff already cut out, so I'm just going around now to basically snap off the rest of this and then do the fender wells. But um, just a quick update that uh, this is my next project is this wide body RX7. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet how I'm going to paint it, but I know it's going to involve these two colors. So, um, stay tuned and we'll see what develops. What's up everybody? So, uh, I am working on this FC3S body and, um, I've got my first layer of liquid mask on, uh, the pieces um, I do not have the back bumper in there because the back bumper doesn't have anything to mask off so I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight into paint when that's ready but uh, I went ahead and did the first layer I'm gonna lay down uh, a couple um, aggressive thick layers hopefully and get coverage done a little quicker than I did on the Mustang which took me forever um, don't worry about that one being upside down apparently that's how they sleep so um anyway um about to get back to this so that i can get into uh getting it painted um so finally got it to uh the blue stage where i was happy with it um and uh had adequate uh amount in there as far as for um peeling purposes so that way it peels off in larger pieces not little bitty bits so i uh, went ahead and got that ready uh, this is my rear light bucket, and I have went ahead and just rolled up some uh, pieces of blue tape and shoved it through the holes for my uh, lights. And then that way I can uh, go ahead and get that painted without a bunch of overspray going onto the front. Um, but I went ahead and trimmed out the uh, mask on this, and um, I'm getting ready to paint those chrome. And then I went ahead and trimmed off the mask on this, which this was actually pretty difficult with that tiny little section right down the center right there um, with that wavy strip that goes up and down around the light bucket. Um, I wanted to leave that whole center section in there. That way it would be clear, of course. But with the design that I'm doing, it's going to come around the outside edge on both sides and then dip up into the front fascia. So... I went ahead and trimmed that. I figured this would be one of the difficult pieces to get the uh, mask out of because of that skinny little spot. Uh, it was a little bit difficult to cut through the mask because it was also very thick right there. If you've used it before, it tends to build up in the grooves like that. Um, so I also went ahead and uh, then trimmed out this piece, which again, it builds up in the groove around the uh, turn signal and I uh, was worried about that becoming a real problem trying to get out, but it actually didn't go too bad. So I uh, left the lights covered, that way I can go ahead and paint them later. But anyway, those were probably going to be the most intricate due to the small little corners and details and um, the buildup that was in there. So I decided to do that stuff first and try and get the problematic things out of the way. Um, so now I am basically ready to start trimming the center section right here where I'm going to um, then meet up with the front bumper so and then it's going to outline the back um, wide body fender and then same thing on this other side here all right so I've got the um, mask peeled off there I've got the bumper kind of lined up here I'm getting ready to uh, go ahead and do the paint on this center section here um, originally, I was going to do the uh, splatters on here with a white backing. But I've recently thought that it might look really cool, actually, to have a chrome strip. Um, so I might do the splatters and then chrome behind it as the backer. And then that way it kind of really pops. I don't know. But I kind of do. I've got it set up on a little makeshift uh, piece of cardboard that I made to kind of hold it in place with just rolled it, um, blue adhesive tape. Uh, I've got that put up and uh, I was just looking over my uh, previous splatter paint job at some of these colors and um, kind of looking to see what I wanted to put on it from this. Um, this gives me a pretty good idea of what all the different colors look like because 
I use pretty much everything on this body. Um, but looking at this, I kind of picked out some colors. Um, and I've got those set aside over here. So um, I've got that set up. And um, I'm going to try and record some of the process to show how basic and easy it is. Um, these are the tools that I typically use. This is what I used on this paint job. And uh, it gave me very small uh, splatters. Um, I basically put paint just on the end of this and then I would get it and flick it at the body like that and um, it would give me the the splattered effect uh, but again it kind of threw it on there in all kinds of different patterns as you can see like this one here is completely different than the splotch up here so um, you can't really get a lot of consistency that way but um, that's what I used and then on this one I'm going to use this uh, particular tool because I think I'll be able to load more paint on the end of it at a time. And I'm going to try and get um, larger splatters going this way. And uh, that way I can do fewer splatters that are more pronounced. Alright, so on the front right here where um, it's got this opening for the lights across the front. Uh, I'm going to have the uh, piece that goes behind it. Uh, I'm going to, it's going to be like a... It's called Fluorescent Racing Berry. That's a mission paint. Um, I'm going to go ahead and have the front be that. So I'm going to do a, like a pink splatter up across the front right here. And then that way that ties into the pink that goes behind this lens that you'll be able to see. So that's the first one I'm going to do. It's actually going to be up. So um, it might be a little bit more difficult to put on target. But I'm hoping to put a big splatter across this corner. And then one more like right up front right here that splatters a little onto the corner. But we'll we'll see how it works out. Like I said, it's not always an exact science when you're flinging paint with something like this. Um, sometimes you just pull it back and fling it and hope it goes where you want it to go. <laughs> Alright, so that worked pretty much how I had hoped in that corner or along that front. It's actually kind of more what I wanted to do on this side. So now I'm going to try and fling this one directly into that corner and I'm going to use just a little bit less paint. And because it's coming off of this edge, I'm going to try and load it more to this edge of the little spatula here and hopefully um, that kind of worked Put it right there. Whoops, I might have got that on my own wall. I don't really want there to be pooling paint sitting anywhere, so I'm going to go ahead and try and wipe up the extra that's just on the mask. I'm not touching any of the paint that actually got on the clear spots of the body. I just don't want there to be a bunch of excess paint all over the mask because it um, makes it more difficult to peel. Okay, so I went ahead and took it out of this cardboard thing because it just kept falling and I was tired of messing with it. So uh, now I've just got to lean it against it. But I went ahead and splattered in some uh, yellow here, uh, some uh, lime green pearl up here. Um, I've got the pink splatter that goes across this front side like I wanted. And then I hit the front just of the grill right there. Um, so that way you can see the pink on the front. And then uh, through the clear you'll see the pink and it'll kind of pull together. Um, we've got some uh, iridescent purple kind of in this back corner right here. I'm going to let these colors dry. That way they don't start to intermix if I fling stuff close to it. Because then the colors can run together. So I'm going to let these ones dry and then I will uh, pick out some other colors from over here, fill in some spaces, and uh, yeah, be done with the splatter portion. So I am back at it again. Um, I am definitely loving the way that I laid it across the front right here. I just hit it with a little bit of this orange 
to fill in a gap and drug the orange down into here. Um, still got the uh, colors on there um, that are fully dry now that I put down yesterday. Um, since I've got two on the bright spectrum, um, the yellow, or the, I'm sorry, the yellow and the green down here, I'm about to fill in this side with something a little bit darker. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use my metallic purple and try and concentrate that in this back corner right here. Uh, like I said, sometimes uh, stuff is a little bit harder to control than you would think because uh, you are really just splattering paint. It's not, you know, easy to exactly get it to flick exactly where you want it to go, um, or at least not for me. Um, again, I'm using this small spatula looking, uh, I don't know what you officially would call it, but it's a number two, whatever it is. <laughs> um, and what I'm doing is, since I want to splatter it in this corner, I am loading paint on the end and then literally just flipping it over and flinging it right at that corner. Um, the angle and whatnot is hard to get sometimes, which is why you see like there I splattered so much of it up on the mask, which is totally a waste of paint and unnecessary, but again, it is some somewhat difficult to control. So um, for that corner right there, I want a decent amount of coverage, so I'm going to go ahead and put on about that much paint, which uh, is kind of hard to tell there, but that's roughly about the size of a dime, maybe a little bit more, and see if I can hit that corner. Alright, so now I've got it right in front right there, and now all i got to do is basically hit this back corner right here. So I'm going to do the same process. little less paint this time because it's a smaller section um, and then see if I can all right so I kind of got that back corner and you don't have to refill it with paint every single time but if you want good coverage on there um, I do put a little bit extra each time um, you can also flick it after you've already flicked off the initial amount of paint and just get tiny little like spider web looking splatters uh, but I kind of want to fill in that back quarter panel. So now I've went ahead and flicked it up into that quarter panel. I left a little bit uncovered on the very bottom down here because I kind of want the backer to show through in spots. Um, but basically that's the process. And I just do that strategically all the way around. And when I say strategically, um, like I said, it's not super accurate but I can and do have the ability obviously to dictate what colors I want where and uh, you know the splatter pattern if you fling from this direction then the splatters are going to go that way uh, if you fling from this direction over here then the splatters will go this way so you can kind of dictate a little bit of the look but it's not an exact science again you know you're, you're flinging paint Okay, so after looking at it, I think what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, because I've got a lot of, um, like, the bright pink kind of red color up here, I'm going to go ahead and try and at least match a little bit of that by putting a little bit down here. I want a splatter to go this way, but I don't want it to be super huge. I want it to basically just come up right along this section right here off that front quarter panel up towards the uh, A-pillar. So hopefully I can just get a small splatter there of red. Uh, and uh, then I can move to a different color there. Um, I'm going to do the red, and then I actually mixed up a uh, custom teal pearl color. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and splatter that directly behind the red. So we'll uh, see how that looks together. It looks pretty cool on the stick. So um, that's the plan. I'm going to see uh, real quick how well I can execute that with uh, what I'm trying to achieve. I might need to actually switch to the um, longer skinnier one for flinging skinnier strips, but I'm going to try it with just a smaller amount of paint. That's pretty much what I wanted, so um, I'm cool with that. I might do just another tiny flick right down here at the very bottom of that to um, kind of bring that section a little fuller. 
there we go so now it kind of drops down around that section right there and uh, I think that looks pretty cool um, since I've got just a tiny bit still on the spatula I'm just gonna put a little bit more on there and flick it out in the distance so you get a little offshoot splatter and uh, that's perfect that is pretty much exactly what I was hoping to achieve in that section right there okay so uh, moved on to the next um, color this this is dry enough now to where the green is not gonna bleed with anything um, so uh, what I'm doing now is I actually decided to put like a different type of splatter so I'm actually using one of these coffee stirrers and I mean just dip it in and same principle just flick it um, it creates these narrow skinny more solid splatters instead of um, the uh, dispersed like large splats so now I've got some that kind of look I, mean, I, I don't know it looks almost zebra ish or um, like tiger stripey kind of looking um, but anyway I did some on this side now I'm filling in kind of this side over here dipped it in there like that and then uh, sometimes a little more than I want so um, flick some of that off there but same principle, just, you know, like that, and throw a splatter across it, so a um, little bit easier to control this than it is on that uh, knife, so I can kind of get them to go a little bit more crazy if I want to, or a little bit more subdued, so I'm uh, going to fill in kind of this area right here. And uh, then I think it should be good. There we go. Go ahead and flip the body over. And uh, let's lay a couple more across this way. Well, that's a nice one right into the yellow where I wanted it. Let's bring one up through this red, and there we go. Okay, so I got the uh, splatters laid down where I wanted them, and uh, kind of have them going mostly this direction, but then did a couple that were more this direction as well, so that way I kind of get some uh, some variants in it, and that's, uh, you know, top and, I mean, this side and this side, both sides, so they kind of are similar as far as uh, the general look of it goes. Um, so I uh, just got to let those dry, um, but I might do one more little section of splatters like this, uh, similar to the blue style, um, but I think I'm going to do those in this um, gold color that I've got. Uh, this gold is actually pretty cool looking. Um, it's what I use to paint these stripes on my um, Liberty Walk Mustang that I did, which if you haven't seen that, you can check that out um, by hitting that little link up here in that corner. Now I'm just going to do the same kind of um, like long splatters like that. I'm going to do a couple just right in the very, very back side right here on both sides. Um, so I've got the gold against the purple. Okay, so after getting splatters in there, I went ahead and laid down my backer and um, did some trim pieces um, around the window. I uh, went ahead and did uh, the little black detail piece under the tail lights here, um, the locks, uh, just a couple of uh, items, and um, went ahead and, like I said, hit them with the black backer. Um, same thing with the front end. Went ahead and hit that. Um, did the uh, light buckets for the back and uh, got those ready to go and then painted in my um, black sections of this front piece that will be the lights under the front bumper so okay so I've gotten the mask basically all peeled off of the RX-7 except for the windows and the sunroof and the lights um, and I'm getting ready to paint the inner colors um, to finish it off but uh, first I wanted to go ahead and do um, like a graffiti kind of tag on the back um, where it says FC3S 
All right, so I've got the mask peeled, and uh, I went ahead and did a small little uh, graffiti on the back, uh, painted from the inside by hand. So I went ahead and put some uh, color under it in kind of like a scattered splatter look as well. Um, the red or the pink is actually splattered on there, um, but the orange is from uh, a paint marker that I went and um, filled in kind of the spacing around it and then off the back a little bit. So, um, and even all the small splatters, I kind of did small little orange dots around those um, anywhere that I saw it. And uh, it does do that around and on both sides. So, and it should really stand out against the final color. Went ahead and laid out my uh, bumpers and um, light bucket part that I need to uh, paint. Um, you know, getting paint on my fingers and whatnot from trying to hold the edge or, you know, trying to lean it up against something and paint it. I can just, you know, pick this up, paint it, move it around as needed, and then go ahead and set it down somewhere and, uh, you know, prop it up and let it dry. All right, so I am getting close to finally being able to lay, lay down my uh, color color. Um, I went ahead and hit it with a um, amethyst purple pearl. So I've got a, a good amount of pearl under there. It's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to see it, but um, you can definitely see the sparkle from certain angles when the light hits it. But um, Anyway, I am uh, getting ready to uh, go ahead and start laying down this next color, which this is going to be RC Iridescent Turquoise uh, behind a Amethyst Purple Pearl. So we'll see how that turns out. Was able to go ahead and spray the um, color down, and uh, I gotta say that I don't really like it. <laughs> I know it's a little too late now to complain about it, but um, it doesn't look like this color in the bottle. Like it looks like a much, much deeper, darker teal, and uh, then when you spray it out, it ends up being this like unattractive pearl green kind of mint color um, it just makes me think every time I look at it it makes me think of like minty fresh toothpaste or something so anyway um, it's got a lot of pearl in it and then I've of course added a secondary layer of pearl that you can't really see right now um, because of you know the angle the lighting and then pr the protective uh, film that's still on there um, I did go ahead and uh, spray the inner light piece um, in this beautiful pink color. It's actually Fluorescent Racing Berry by Mission Colors. I'm pretty excited about that color, but um, yeah, this other one, still very minty. So um, we'll have to see. There is a lot of that amethyst pearl on there, and you can kind of see that, but... Um, I think it'll really be much more effective whenever I get the protective layer off and then I'll really be able to kind of get a better idea what it looks like. So I'm going to back it in black and um, I know when I back it in black it'll give it much more of a deeper color. Um, it'll give it more, more depth uh, or at least I hope it does. It has on my previous paint jobs so... And then I can uh, take off the window masks and I need to paint this outside trim right here. So I'm going to cut into the protective plastic from the outside and remove out that strip. And then I will spray that with a uh, the black backer that I use. And uh, if you spray it up close and you get a wet look to it when you go across it, it'll look wet when it dries. If you spray it from further back and let the droplets fall and kind of texturize the surface, 
then it gives it much more of a satin look and looks much more realistic, like real uh, weather stripping and trim. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, it's the same process I used on my Mustang when I made that one. So uh, looking forward to hopefully getting this finished here shortly. Um, so that way I can start something else. <laughs> it's what I do. I went ahead and uh, sprayed the front lights up here um, in that yellow. Went ahead and took the uh, liquid mask off of the round lights. And um, those actually turned out pretty good uh, with paint up around the edges and uh, clear on the front like I had hoped. And then I took a piece of scrap and I went ahead and did it um, in chrome. This is actually going to be the backing to these lights. Um, so that that way it's got that chrome effect and then also I will use this to mount my LEDs by just poking some holes in it. But so far I've got those pieces ready. Um, those are basically painted and, and good to go. Um, I've also got the uh, body in the back um, in my paint area. Um, right, like this is in a paint area too. Um, back in my other paint area and um, doing the red lights on it. So let's go check that out. All right, so back here in my little workshop area, I went ahead and took the uh, rear masks off and sprayed those red. Um, went ahead and did the uh, rear corner lights and third brake light. And then I just now uh, peeled the paint I'm sorry, the mask off of the sunroof and sprayed that. But now that I'm looking at it, it looks like that paint is fucking up the rest of my paint. Oh, man. Please tell me when I flip this over, it's not fucked. Fuck! So I've been working on this RX-7 now for quite a while and uh, got down basically to the final steps. Um... I'd already sprayed on the base color and everything, and uh, basically I was getting to where I was um, to do the lights, so I went ahead and sprayed the red lights on the back, um, and then I had to do the sunroof. Um, unfortunately, when I sprayed the red on the back, the paint that I used started to eat through the base color, so... Now it has muddied up this color, and it also bled around the third brake light, um, and actually ate the paint right here, um, and kind of spidered out right there. So, uh, I don't know why it did that there, um, didn't do it anywhere over here by the other lights, um, or on the sides right here with these little marker lights that I painted, but uh, pretty disappointed in that, because it really kind of messed up this back end right here and gave it a very reddish kind of metallic-y color which on camera it looks rusty and brown but um, that's not the case so much so um, after that I had to spray the sunroof on the inside and now it looks like trash I've got so many hours into this paint job everything else came out fucking beautifully the splatter the chrome the graffiti, um, the pearl color that is on it, on the top, like, all of it looks good, except for that damn roof. That shit pisses me off so bad. Arr, rah, damn it. So aggravating. Okay, so the satin uh, trim is done. Um, I uh, went ahead and decided to uh, paint the roof satin black as well because of the screw up from using the uh, the window tint that kind of bubbled up the inside in there. Um, I tried to fix it a little bit with some uh, colors and whatnot that kind of made it match the graffiti, but. It just looked terrible. It looked out of place. Um, so I went ahead and uh, cut the roof line and uh, did the top in satin black. So um, hopefully that will look better than the other did. Um, I don't know. I'm going to 
let it all dry overnight, and then in the morning I will uh, peel the plastic off and see how it looks. It's had some changes, uh, some unexpected results, and then some unexpected changes again. But yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, let's do that. As you can see, the color looks uh, quite a bit different with the plastic off. Um, I always got to remember that the color does not look in its final setting how it will, um, painted versus masked. So um, I actually like this color a little bit better after looking at it this way. Um, you can kind of see that um, metallic amethyst pearl on there um, from this angle. You can really see it from uh, some of the other angles when I've picked up some of the other body parts and looked at those. So uh, gives off a pretty cool look to it. Uh, definitely improves the original color, which I'm not a fan of at all. Um, I used it expecting it to actually be um, darker like this. Um, and uh, it came out much lighter than I expected. So let's go ahead and peel that sunroof off. Look at that nice sunroof look on the top there, but um, there's still masks to peel off of the window. And then, of course, I've got masks on the inside that I need to peel off those windows too. So um, I will go ahead and get it all set to its final look here shortly, but um, I need to clean off all this extra crap that's getting stuck on there from the protective cover that I did. But other than that, I mean, not too bad. I'm pretty... Pretty pleased with the way it looks, um, with the exception of having to fix that roof. But even that didn't come out too bad after I fixed it. Uh, better than having the black spider vein cracks in it all over. So, but um, that came out really cool, man. The colors, the iridescent, the chrome behind it, like just that looks really cool on the side. Um, and there's some colors, you know, in places that aren't anywhere else on the body. And then the uh, little graffiti splatter I did on the backside coming out of the uh, stripe I thought was kind of cool too. So that came out pretty neat. That pink is super vibrant. I'm definitely using that on one of my next builds. I've got it all peeled. Windows are all clear. This time, thankfully, all the liquid mask came off without leaving any residue behind whatsoever so that's good um, there's no lights in them yet but I did go ahead and stick those buckets down in there uh, just double-sided tape that went on um, you know the tops and then the sides to secure it in place and then after doing that I went ahead and f um, did the fitting on this uh, rear bumper and uh, got that secured on there with some double-sided tape just kind of tried to line up those body lines and um, get that secured in place as well. Uh, it's only secured in there from the sides. I've got some double-sided tape that you can kind of see right there. Um, holding the uh, sides on. Um, but there's not really anything holding the back, as you can kind of see with that opening. So I'm probably going to go ahead and put some shoe goo on there to uh, get that bumper nice and secured in place. And then also to uh, ensure that there's no... Uh, gap where any light or anything shows through added in this uh, flat piece right here that I painted chrome um, and that flat piece is going to be my uh, LED holders um, I drilled out some uh, four millimeter openings in each one of those and centered it up stuck it on there with some double-sided tape and then I went ahead and um, mounted that uh, piece in there with double-sided tape as well I'm um, just got a couple of pieces in each corner and then one right in the center right here. So I uh, basically have that piece ready and I'm getting ready to go ahead and mount that guy up in here. Okay, so uh, although it is currently upside down right now, I've got the um, front bumper mounted on there. And to do so, I just um, took a small piece of 
um, double-sided tape to this little tab and this one in here. Uh, there's actually none on this center tab right here um, currently. So um, just quickly mounted in there. Um, right now I actually just pulled out my uh, light kit, which I'm using this Scale Reflex Hella Yellow. Uh, it says on here that it's a 10 LED light system, uh, but I just took it out of the package. And there's definitely more than uh, 10 LEDs here. So um, what I'm going to have to do, which, you know, I'm, I'm happy to do so. Um, it's actually got 12 LEDs on it, which means that now I can actually go ahead and put um, some LEDs in my little uh, parking lights on the side. Um, so I have this uh, set of universal uh, light buckets. So I'm going to go ahead and take out these, uh, this one right here and this one right next to it that are kind of that longer um, rectangular shape. I'm going to go ahead and cut those out and use those up front uh, to go right here on these little corners. So um, I, I really like this uh, LED system because basically you've got one plug and everything else runs in line. So... Um, this whole entire set right here is all connected with just one set of wires. You'll see here in a second <clears throat> how easy that is compared to some of the light kits where you've got a controller box and then you've got an individual LED that goes out to every single light. You end up with so many wires. Um, now this doesn't have a controller box. This is just going to plug directly back into my um, extension that goes to my uh, receiver. Um, but for the purposes of here now, I've actually got this separate battery here. It's a small little Genzace 450. Um, I've got it connected to this on-off switch that I got on Amazon for like three bucks. And I've got uh, my extension cable there. So that way I can go ahead and test it out and then we'll plug it in and see what it looks like. Okay, so I've kind of got them separated out, and um, while I was uh, looking at them here, you can tell basically which line is going to go to the front and which one's going to go to the rear. Uh, this is going to be my front, and you can tell because obviously these bulbs, all three look different. Uh, this one has more of a flat top to it. This one's completely rounded. And this one's tinier with a clear LED right in the center that you can see uh, much, much more visibly than any of the others. Um, so this is going to be the variations of lights, which is going to be that white, amber, yellow. So since I know I'm going to run those to the front, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set that string up there. Uh, since all the others are red, you can look at these and see that all three of these lights look the same and so that tells me that these are going to be the ones that go to the back for the red ones so uh, I've got that kind of laid out like I said you can see how clean that wiring is compared to some of the kits you may or may not have seen before um, if you have not seen them uh, just do a little research and um, you know pull up some some reference uh, pictures uh, see how much wiring is involved, and you may also decide to just go this route. I just want something basic that lights up and looks cool. Okay, so I've got my little uh, power connector hooked up there. And see what it looks like. I've got my two hella yellows dead in the center. I've got the white ones on the outer edge. So, I think it looks pretty cool. Definitely has good light output. Um, blows my mind how well these miniature lights actually really work in these RC cars to replicate the you know the realism of the the lights shining. So uh, that's the back. I'm sorry, that's the front. Let's go to the back, and then so from the back you can see that with the way that those are mounted up in there. Yep. So that looks pretty dope. I do like that. And the uh, LED light puts the uh, reflection of the circle on the surface of the glass. So as you turn, you can kind of see 
the circle that it creates shining on the actual light housing uh, with the bucket behind it. So that's a pretty cool effect. They are a smoked red. Um, I did like uh, two layers of the red and then one layer of smoke. And then another layer of red, um, and then another layer of smoke. So um, they've kind of got a smoked effect to them. In fact, when you turn the lights back off, they look rather dark. So, but with the lights on, they go like that. So I think that looks pretty dope. Um, no complaints with this light system. I definitely like it. Like I said, it is. Very minimal wiring. Um, it's a very simple kit, but it's also very cool and very effective. And I mean, you can see, like, I'll sh like shining it over there on my ceiling. Uh, that's a good eight feet away from me, from the car. So it's pretty crazy. like a little RX-7 flashlight. <laughs> I um, cut out these little buckets. These are going to be the ones that I use for my front uh, parking lights. And I need to go ahead and um, paint these and then drill them out. Um, so that way I can put the, the LEDs through. Um, it does have a protective film on it. But the funny thing is that the protective film is actually on the wrong side. I don't know um, why they did it this way, but... Um, Typically, the protective film is on the outside, and that way it protects you from overspray. However, because these buckets are going to be reflecting the light from in here, I need to spray the chrome on the back side like this, so that way when you look at it from the inside, all of that is chrome reflective. Um, if I would have sprayed it the other way, then this side would have the chrome and the black backer behind it, causing the inside of the housing to actually be black. So um, what I'm going to have to do is peel off the protective mask that they've got on this first, uh, which you can see right there when I scratch it with my fingernail that it leaves little lines and marks. Um, so this side is a protective plastic. I'm going to peel that off and um, then go ahead and spray it with the chrome and then back it with the black. So that way I get that nice mirror effect on the inside and then that, in turn, will reflect all the other light from the parking light and hopefully reflect it out. So um, I'm going to go ahead and peel that plastic off and get to um, painting these. So I have uh, done the chrome, did the black. Okay, there, whoops, there it goes. Uh, there we go. So I've got those cut out um, crudely, but they are cut out. Um, got that uh, ready. I'm just going to trim them up, get them to fit better, and then I will uh, stick them in place with some shoe goo. All right, so uh, smaller items like this, I like to go ahead and tape in place when I'm drilling them. That way I can make sure that they stay where I want them. So I uh, went ahead and, uh, and drilled those out. But these universal buckets are actually pretty handy to have because um, you never know. You know, when you may or may not need something that maybe your your kit doesn't come with. So, um, glad I had these on hand. Otherwise, I would not be using those uh, front lights um, in the same manner. So, I'm going to go ahead and um, get these put on. Okay, so after taking the uh, small little bucket that I had and uh, painting that chrome, like I said, cutting the little hole in the back, um, it is pretty much perfect it holds the led doesn't wobble doesn't come out anything like that so um, it's going to hold on to that really well and um, once those are plugged down under on there you can see the uh, corner lights and how they light up so um, pretty cool effect with that chrome bucket back there it looks a lot better than it did originally uh, so i'm going to go ahead and finish getting those all set up and installed and that way i can go ahead and stick them in place all right, so I've got my lights all uh, secured in place with some uh, shoe goo. Uh, just little dabs of shoe goo, not like heavily or anything like that, you know, but just enough to hold it in place. Um, I've got the back ones done as well, so that way they don't just pop out freely. 
Um, but the next thing I need to do really is I need to uh, tuck the wires and then I'm thinking that I might want to build something to kind of help block in the light. Um, I'm not sure exactly how other people do it, but like there's a lot of uh, red light that's given off when those are on that comes out the back side of them. So um, I thought about just spraying them real quick with some black backer. Um, to kind of darken them up and hide the color from coming through. I don't know. I'm going to think of something. But anyway, um, lights are in. They look really good. I have uh, put them in place to where they're as even as I could get them as far as the circles uh, that reflect through. Um, so that way it actually looks good instead of having like, you know, one circle like way over here and one down here and then one up here all wonky looking. Because sometimes when you put those LEDs in there, you never know if they're going to line up um, 100% depending on how you cut them or, you know, whatever the case is. So, uh, But anyway, got those in, got the front in with my parking lights and that um, housing uh, that you cannot really see in there, which is good because... I mean, it's doing its job. Um, all the lights are flecting out. Uh, I got the fronts all in. Those things are bright as can be, man. They're really bright. Um, so, yeah, front end is heavily well lit. I think it looks very good. Uh, I need to get my intercooler mounted on there. And um, then uh, there's probably a few more things um, that I need to do on it as well. But, uh, yeah. But I'm going to go ahead and spray both and uh, see if I can't darken up the lighting on the inside of the body and uh, just let it show the light outside. I've got the intercooler uh, opening taped off so that way I don't get any overspray on the outside since the plastic protective film is already off. Alright, so I've got uh, lights in and I'm um, kind of darkened up and now I'm starting to go ahead and add some of the uh, livery decals that I picked up from RC Cut Paste Graphics, and uh, yeah, just uh, this is my first time really adding those. I don't usually use uh, liveries or whatever. I just do paint, but um, I wanted to kind of add a little bit more to this one. So I'm gonna get back to it, and uh, hopefully I'll have it finished here shortly. All right, so I went ahead and uh, threw on the decals that I wanted. You know, I uh, did the black body lines around the um, wide body and the doors, the hood, the lights, um, and then the hatch. So, oh, and the uh, gas cap as well. And then um, I got new tires to go on the rims, and I wanted to uh, add something to them. So I also got the uh, lettering to go around those. So I went ahead and just finished doing up those wheels. I'm sorry, those tires, and I am about to get them mounted on the custom wheels that I painted just specifically for this build. Alright, so I've got some uh, templates drawn on there that I traced out real quick with the little side mirrors that I have right there. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and paint the chrome on there, and then the back, uh, the backer, uh, black, ultimate black backer, jeez. Okay, so I have uh, added a few more accessories. I've got my uh, intercooler up front right there with the sprayer on it. I've got my little side mirrors put in place there um, with just a 3M tape. And uh, it's got my little polycarbonate uh, mirrors that I made on there. So uh, last thing I just did now was I went ahead and attached my windshield wipers that I painted in uh, gold and silver um, to uh, you know keep the kind of the color going and whatnot so I've got those painted out the best I could okay so I've got my uh, chassis out and um, getting ready to try and fit up this new body see how it lays out on the chassis um, you know some of them are very different than others and uh, in doing so I have uh, already noticed beforehand obviously 
this doesn't really have a lot of back space for the trunk or anything since it's a hatch um, you know and with that the hatch starts to immediately uh, elevate off the back bumper or off the back uh, you know section right there above the bumper um, so unfortunately I won't have a flat spot to really hook those um, magnet cups to so uh, whenever I fit it up <clears throat> Let's get the stance somewhat right here. Okay, so that's pretty that's, that's pretty close. It's not 100% dead on, but it's pretty close. And uh, with that, you can see that those cups where they would go would actually need to be on the glass right here, and that is not gonna that's not gonna look good, um, and not really something I want to do because I don't want to have glue showing through the window either so um, what I'm gonna do is I actually have another piece of um, scrap and what I did was uh, this is off um, I want to say my Mustang um, I don't remember but obviously this is where the front air dam is you can tell from the curve and whatnot this is you know the front right there of um, another piece of uh, a body or whatever so uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to flip it upside down. You can see I've already kind of trimmed out the edges a little bit so it wasn't so monstrous. I think I'm going to do it like this. Um, and basically fit it down in there like that, and then that way this curved edge is facing forward. Um, that should give me enough of a spot to put my magnets right here in the corners. And uh, still, you know, have a substantially stiff base right there um, to be able to attach those two so I'm gonna go ahead and paint this all black obviously and then that way it's not just you know showing clear like that okay so this is the piece that I'm gonna use uh, in the rear to create basically like a rear deck um, where I can use the magnet uh, cups on it and uh, another thing that's kind of nice about this is when I paint it black hopefully it will kind of help to uh, uh, contains some of the light that comes off of the rear tail lights, so maybe that will be a bonus But uh, I've got it a uh, little piece of tape on there, and I am about to go ahead and hit it with some black So I'll be back Okay, so I have um, Gone ahead and pulled the body back off of my chassis and now I have mounted my side splitters um so i'm just waiting on that to dry got it currently weighed down with some stuff to put some pressure on it and uh, just used shoe goo to glue those to the bottom there um so i'm uh gonna get those uh finished off and then i just need to mount my uh, custom painted wheels to the chassis and then this one should be ready to roll